Hey guys, it's Phoenix Automotive here again. In this video, we're going to be showing a 2016 base Mustang. Uh, this is a quick video on how to install. If you have a premium Mustang, the connections are going to be pretty much similar. Uh, the only difference is maybe your backup camera is a different connection. And what I mean by that is looking at this factory unit, you could see that it is a four inch screen, sync one, and uh, it is manual AC. So, what you need to do is you need to take out this factory unit, this factory uh, face plate as well as a screen. And you can see behind this four inch screen is a little connector. And this is your backup camera connector. So you see here, we have our backup connector right here. Instead of going to this, we have it going to this module with a little box that converts the uh, feed into a video signal. And you have a male RCA labeled uh, rear view camera. So this will get us our backup camera. And this is a base Mustang. It does have that premium connection right here. So if you have a premium Mustang with an eight inch screen, this is a four inch screen. If you have an eight inch, you're gonna be using this connector. So instead of this small connector going, you can see up is uh, connected. And if we pull it down, it's disconnected. So let's put it back there and push it up. Instead of using this small connector for the four, eight inch, you're gonna be using this big connector. It'll be essentially the same thing, you'll have a male RCA. So this is the camera connection handled. Up next is uh, once you've taken out the face place, you've taken out the little screen, you do need to take out the CD player as well as the uh, air conditioning control box. You can see we've taken those both out. You're gonna be plugging these back connectors into the back of our unit and these connect this connector to the back of uh, our unit so let's put these away these are the factory parts and uh, let's get to the connections so you're going to need the basics you're going to need this connector this main harness uh, with this main harness you see we have two connectors that go to the factory car we also have this rca uh, aux in left and aux in right this is for a uh, I believe if you have like OnStar or something, or if you want uh, aftermarket sound from somewhere else, and you have a purple connector right here. On this purple connector, you have a yellow black wire labeled OBD, and uh, you also have this orange black wire labeled amp control. So like I said, if you have a premium model, a premium Mustang, uh, you might have like a Bose sound system or Bang & Olufsen sound system, you might have to connect this amp control connector. In this uh, harness, we don't have that. In the main harness, there's nothing to connect that to. So this OBD connector is gonna connect to this OBD connection we have at the bottom that we've connected. We do provide you this connector. So this connector goes to the bottom of the car. Let's put that back there. And uh, this whole wire, what we do is we put it behind the vehicle, underneath the steering column, and it'll come out from right here. You're gonna make that connection right here. So OBD connector goes to this connection and what this will give you is your rpm and speed so let's connect the main harness this is a brain now the brain on one side you're gonna have this connector that goes from the brain to this screen which is back here so we're gonna do that and then on the other side we have the main harness where we plug this in so let's plug in the main harness and on these pins uh, not all of them are needed so the ones you do need is this harness right here. It's a black little connector. It has the biggest space. And one of these RCAs, yellow, are labeled camera. So this camera is gonna connect to this camera right here. So let's make that connection. And this black connector goes behind our unit. So let's make that connection. That was the only one that fit. They do have a certain shape. If your camera doesn't trigger, there is a green wire labeled back or back power. You might also have one labeled reverse or reversing. Uh, just take out these wires and uh, get it ACC. Maybe that will trigger your reverse screen. Or trigger the camera to turn on. Say you have the reverse screen comes up but the camera says no signal, maybe you need to power the camera. So that's the camera connected. The next thing to connect is um, the radio antenna. So this radio antenna, you get an adapter. Let's plug that in. And actually let's plug it on the car side. So this purple connection goes to this red and black. Let's connect that. And this will connect to our brain right here. So let's connect the brain. This blue connector we have is a GPS and this GPS antenna right here. Uh, you gotta connect that as well. 
for the sake of this video, we're not going to connect the GPS just because uh, you don't want too much around when plugging it in. But the Wi-Fi antenna, you screw on to here and it goes on like that. The Wi-Fi will still work. The antenna just makes it a bigger range that you can connect to. The next thing we have connected is right here. These are the USB ports. You get something like a, you get a brown connector and this brown connector has a certain shape to it. Two grooves on the bottom and a groove on the right. And this goes in a certain position on the back of the screen or back of the brain. And I see it goes right here, right next to the GPS one. And this has too many USB ports and what this will do is retain your factory USB ports. We're going to connect these two. So that's one and that's uh, that's two. Now this should retain your factory USB ports and that one of them is right here. So this factory USB port right here. But there's also one at the bottom right here and this bottom one we just route that to the bottom of this unit. You can see there's a hole right there where you can route your factory USB port just put it into this slot like there now that we have the USB connected we also have the camera connected two other harnesses that you get you get this uh, harness right here it's a yellow connector and uh, it's labeled RCA L uh, front rear I mean front right front left rear left rear right and this is for our aftermarket sound system and this sub wire is a app activation wire. So this wire will be able to activate your amplifier to tell it to turn on. It's not a power wire, but it is an app activation wire. And this is for aftermarket sound systems. You also get a gray cable right here. And this gray cable is labeled aux. And it has, again, six pins, a certain groove. You're gonna fit it to the correct one. And it has RCAs. So it has a yellow one. It's labeled aux CVBS and a right and left audio. What you can essentially do is maybe get like a PS3 and put the RCAs through here for video, right sound, left sound, and you can maybe play your PS3 on this screen. You'll have a screen and it'll show the PS3 image uh, of your console. So this we're not gonna use as well. And that's about it. So now that we have that connected, on the main harness, you can see we have a couple things. We have two of these big connectors. We have the amp control if you have a higher end premium unit like a Bose or a Bang & Olufsen sound system you're going to use this connector amp control and we have the uh, OBD connected we also have this purple connector right here if you had noticed and this purple connector does need a plug into the back of our unit right here so find the connection and plug it in like so okay we have that connected let's plug in these two big connectors so it seems to go one right here. That's one. And the other one right here. That's two. Now the unit should turn on at this point. Let's put the box inside the vehicle. Put the box inside. In terms of mounting the box, most people either um, make their own mounting tool or just put it in here and make maybe use like double-sided tape to put it against securely. Again, it's not that important as long as it's in here and nothing gets disconnected and it's secure. So at the bottom here, we have two AC connections and these are our AC. One of them goes on the right, one of them on the left. On the back of our screen, what we need to plug in now is the screen to the top here as well as to two AC connections. I prefer the AC connections first, just so it's easier. If you can see this, one is there. And let's get the other one. Right there. And now we can connect the screen to the brain. Like so. So, so far we just have this not connected. This is not needed. So we're, now that we're at this point, one thing to note, we did not do this, but we recommend you unplugging the battery, unplug the negative while you're doing the install, just so you don't blow any fuses or the car is totally off and nothing is con disconnected while the car is connected to the battery. But we have the key right here. Let's turn on the vehicle and see it work in action. There is a green LED here that you can see it turns on. And at night, these do all light up as well. The hazard, let's check that you flip them up hazards do work you also have a track on and off switch that we're not going to choose right now and a steering wheel switch and this steering wheel changes the driving mode from normal to 
sport and to comfort. We're gonna set it back to normal. And on the, here we have a mode. Now this mode switch will change the audio input. So if you're going from Bluetooth music to the music icon to radio, that's what this switch will do. If we go in reverse, we can see that the reverse does show. You can go in the reverse screen while it's, uh, while it's booting up. So you can see we have a vehicle behind us and the sensor does work. You hear it go beep, go back and park. If we go to the camera app, you can also see that the camera is showing. RPMs are showing, that means speed will show too. You can drive around, see if speed will show. Camera is showing, let's check if the AC controls are working. If you remember those two plugs at the bottom, air conditioning is turning on. Let's go with the fan speed. On initial setup, you do want to leave your car running for a while just so that the unit and the car can speak to each other and get its settings fully well done. Uh, if we go lower in temperature, I believe it goes to like 66. So the reason why it's a little laggy just now is because we just installed the unit and it needs to read the car. So let it run for a while and talk to each other. Let's check radio, see if we have sound. That's the radio sound. Let's go to 97.1. So we do have sound. Let's check if the steering wheel controls work. So volume up. You can see I press up, it goes up. Go down, I go down. Next track, it'll go to the next radio station that's on save. So 98, 106. Let's check back with the AC controls. Let's turn on the AC. It's on low right now. The lowest it can go is 66, then it goes really low. And uh, we're not gonna try the high one, but of course the heat does work. Uh, you can change the blow from the feet to the chest. Let's do all, feet and chest. And that's cool, max AC. Let's go max. All right, so that's how to install your Mustang. Now this is the Android 7.1 unit. Uh, we did just come out with the PX6 unit and that will be compatible with the Mustang Shelby cars. So if you have a Mustang Shelby, check out the PX6 unit. That unit is more compatible. This is the 7.1, works with both base and premium Mustangs. If you have the um, premium model with a Bose sound system or Bang & Olufsen, we still suggest the PX6 unit. The sound will work better there. Uh, we've had people get this unit. They, they like it sometimes. The sound doesn't work. Maybe they have to do amp bypassing, but most cases you shouldn't have to do that with these plug and play units. Um, if you guys have any other questions, send us an email or give us a call. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.